come on get angry this person is provoking you now don't question why did this thought of anger come to me the thought of anger you are in this material world you have got a material mind the monkey mind will create its things but you have to check it no monkey mind i'm not interested king who had his favorite falcon and the falcon used to sit on the king's shoulder and the king would take it around they were in great love with each other the king went around one day all by himself hunting and he was extremely thirsty his tongue had become parched and there he found a little stream of water coming from above the rocks he said wow here is my opportunity to quench my thirst and he took out a cup to fill the water in that cup the moment it got filled the falcon it jumped up from his shoulder and knocked the cup out of his hand became annoyed this falcon why did it not let me drink water but you know i love my falcon i am attached so he ignored he controlled the force of anger and he filled it up again but moment it was full again the falcon came and dropped off the water so the force of anger increased so he filled it a third time and again the falcon came and it knocked off this time he was not shaknoti haivaya shodham he was unable to control so he took his sword and chopped off the falcon's head the end of his pet falcon and that was when he saw that there was a dead snake and the water coming was full of poison the falcon was doing a good deed to its master by preventing the master from drinking the poison but in his anger he put an end to it so likewise it is said that your biggest enemy is not the provocation of your anger but the anger itself krodho krodhe kathanute become angry upon your anger my dear mind why did you become angry i will now vent my anger upon you like dashrath ji says hara gunandana prana perite tum benu jiyata bahut din bite he is venting his anger upon his lower self what kind of a devotee of ram i am that he is gone off into the forest and i am still alive it shows i have got no love for him otherwise my pran should have left the body so dashrat is making that anger into a tool for self transformation when you become angry upon yourself to propel yourself further and that is the right orientation of anger that to be a yogi you will have to check these forces desire and anger kaam and krodh which means the material mind will give you the reasons come on get angry this person is provoking you now don't question why did this thought of anger come to me the thought of anger you are in this material world you have got a material mind the monkey mind will create its things but you have to check it no monkey mind i'm not interested look some people become puzzled why did this thought come to my mind now if negative thoughts don't come to your mind then you will be in golok in this world you have to expect all kinds of thoughts will come but your sadhana your test is what do you do with those thoughts do you adopt them do you accept them do you ignore them do you reject them the thought of pride will also come <laughs> i am like this i am like that now what do you do so shri krishna says that 
you will be a yogi if you can check these forces. So recognize those critters, recognize desire, recognize anger, recognize pride, recognize greed, and then you check those forces, then you will be happy. See, some people say, Swamiji, those people are doing such bad things, how are they happy? You know, they are cheating their way and they are also prosperous. They are so happy. Bhagavan kya karta hai? Bhagavan dekhta nahi hai? No, never think like that. True happiness can never come by cheating. To be truly happy, you have to be truly good. There is no other way. We cannot cheat in the kingdom of God. Cheating is possible in the world. But God is sitting inside. And that is why if we want that grace, if we want the true happiness which is in God, there is only one way to get it, which is to purify yourself. And hence, you need to be truly good by truly giving up anger and greed. So recognize these things as destructive. These desires, they fool us. They make a fool of us. And anger is such a terrible thing that it destroys the intellect. He Krishna says that if you can check these forces, that means the forces will arise. They will push desire. Can I have a fourth cheese pastry? That force will come. You have to hold it, withstand it. And the force of anger, those people, it's not that they are missing out. Oh my God, they missed out this. But purified intellect says, they are the ones who are truly happy. Because they learn to purify the mind and find the happiness within. He says that yogis who rejoice in themselves. They don't feel the need. I'm 50 year old, I'm alone. What will I do in my old age? I need company, let me get married. So they don't feel that need for external company. They are rejoicing within themselves, enjoying the delight of God within. Illumined by the inner light, such yogis who are united with the Lord are liberated from material existence. So the sign of chasing happiness on the outside is the sign of ignorance. Very simple. It is a sign that we don't have knowledge. All these comparisons are deluding. An experiment was conducted where researchers were giving cucumbers to monkeys. The experiment was that they hand a marble to the monkey and the monkey has to hand the marble back. And if it does that, then they get one cucumber. So all was going very well. The monkey was learning, it would take the marble, give it back and get its cucumber as a reward. Until it saw that the monkey by its side was getting grapes. <laughs> now the problem began. I am getting cucumbers, it's fine, but this fellow monkey is getting grapes. So it became so frustrated that it took the cucumber which was given and threw it on the researcher's face. <laughs> that is why it is said that comparison is the thief of joy. You are living in America, you have got a job, you've got a house, you got this, that, but the other person got a Tesla and I am still stuck with this car. Now the unhappiness has begun. <laughs> so it is always grass is greener on the other side. 
That is the illusion. Everybody is thinking, that guy must be happy. And the fact is that in the material realm, nobody is happy. Now that decision, if it comes, your problem is solved. Otherwise, you keep on running and running and running. There is no end to it. The whole life will go by. So if we can somehow decide, and how will the decision come? Now you say, you know, I need to experience this, then I need to experience that. Then you go on and on and on experiencing. Now you want to experience everything in the world. A human being is expected to use the buddhi, the intellect. That look, I don't need to experience everything. I can use my brains. I am the soul and the soul is divine. So the happiness of the soul is also from the divine. There are four kinds of buddhi or intellect. One is the intellect of the patanga, that insect. It is drawn to the deepak, to the light. Whew, here it comes, it gets burnt. You know, sometimes if you're in a dark room with a deepak, and it gets attracted, it comes, it goes off. So it gets burnt, it runs off. But then again it comes back. Then again it goes off, then again it comes. Insects, intellect is so small, it's not able to learn what to do. More intelligent than that is the cat. The cat sits, it drinks the hot milk. Hot, boiling milk is placed, the cat drinks it. It learns, wait, this is danger. After that one bitter experience, then it is not willing to drink charge also without blowing. <laughs> then it will drink the charge. The cat has learnt. More intelligent than that is the intellect of the goat. It has never seen a wolf. But the first time the wolf appears before it, the goat realizes. Now the goat doesn't say, let it eat me once, then I will understand. <laughs> It picks out the danger really by seeing it. Oh my God, this doesn't look good. <laughs> Run for your life. And a human being is expected. Bhagavan says, I have given you the buddhi. I expect you to use it that even without seeing, you should understand. With the help of knowledge that I am the soul and my happiness is in the Supreme. So that, with that conviction of the intellect, then we will seek happiness within ourselves. Which is the slogan of J.K. Yog, right? How do you actually become happy? Not by chasing it on the outside. When you try to be the best person you can be, when you try to do the best you can do, and you feel the best that you can feel. So if you really want to be happy, then be good and do good to feel good. That's just another way of putting what Sri Krishna has put out here. <laughs>